Hey there, sister. Welcome to the Social Media for Mompreneurs podcast. I'm your host, Allison Scholes, and I am on a mission to help mompreneurs like you ditch the Instagram overwhelm and take control of your time on the app and build an extraordinary brand and business, but still be fully present with your family and just be crazy happy with your life. This show is filled with Instagram strategies, marketing hacks, branding and business tips with a side of coffee and Jesus. If you're ready for some juicy content, you know what to do. Hand your kiddos those tablets, open those juice boxes, grab your coffee, whiskey or wine, and let's dive in. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Social Media for Mompreneurs podcast. And today I want to pose a question to you. Are you sabotaging your productivity? I know that's kind of a loaded question and you might be thinking, no, I have all these great habits that I'm doing on a week to week or month to month. I'm organized. I have everything planned out. I am not sabotaging my productivity. But maybe you already have some bad habits that you don't even know that could possibly be ruining your business productivity. So the first bad habit that you might have and you don't realize it is too much social media time. So first of all, how long are you spending on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and even TikTok. You might not even realize how much time you are spending on these social media apps. And today's smartphones, you can go right into the settings and you can actually take a look at how much time you are spending on these platforms. Go take a look at it. Sometimes we don't even realize how much time we are spending on our phones and just stuck in the scroll and we're actually not being productive and actually working in our business. And sometimes we get on the social media platforms thinking that we are going to be productive and work in our business, be interacting with our community and building relationships. But let's be honest, sometimes we get on Instagram, for example, and then you get stuck in the scroll or you get stuck watching some reels and then 20 minutes, 30 minutes later, you realize, why was I even on this platform? What did I get on here for? You forget what your purpose was. So you really have to analyze how long you're spending on social media. And then secondly, how many times a day are you getting on these platforms? And then ask yourself, is it really necessary? Is it necessary for you to be getting on three, four five, even six times a day? Is it just a habit to just grab your phone and just open these apps and just stare at them with absolutely no purpose, right? Is that really being productive in your business? So we almost have to train our brains to number one, spend less time on the social media applications and then analyze how many times a day are you actually getting on? So I want you to think about where do you want to be in the next five years? Do you still want to be scrolling the platforms like a maniac or do you want to be living your life? Here's the thing. You have the power and control to limit your exposure to social media and your activity on social media. So here's a couple of tips. Turn off all your social media notifications. There is no reason that your phone should be dinging at you when someone sent you a DM or someone is requesting a friendship on LinkedIn or Facebook or someone is liking, commenting. There's no reason to get distracted by those notifications. It's not gonna help help your productivity. So just go ahead and turn off those notifications. Remember, you need to protect your peace and you need to protect your mental well-being. So analyze, ask yourself that question. Are you spending too much time on social media? Because if you are, unfortunately, that is a really bad habit that is most likely sabotaging your productivity. All right, the second one here, what is your 
end of day bedtime routine. Is your phone in your hand? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you on the laptop right before you go to bed? Is your sleep disrupted constantly? If you have bad sleeping habits, that is really going to ruin your daily productivity. Now, there are so many studies done out there that link the quality of sleep to your productivity during the day. So really, this is really up to you to analyze what you are doing in the evening. Is it helping you to calm down and have that restful sleep that your body and your brain really need? So I have a couple of rules that really help me. I have a no phone in my hand after 7 p.m. And I know sometimes if I hear like my Voxer notification going off, that's something else that I need to silence on my phone. I'm so tempted to go answer it, but I have to train my brain and get myself into a calm down mode so I can actually get the sleep and the rest that my mind, my brain, my body needs so I can perform at my best the next day. So you might have to establish a boundary where there's no laptop and there's no phone after a certain time. So you can actually take time for yourself. Again, it goes back to protecting your peace, protecting your well-being. And then of course, for myself, there is no phone in the bedroom at night. The only person in our house that has a phone in their bedroom is my husband, just because there might be an emergency because we don't have a landline. So he keeps it, but it's on silent in our bedroom. It's just kind of a in-case emergency kind of thing. So I want you to really analyze what is your nighttime routine and are you getting enough sleep and is your sleep uninterrupted? That is really going to have a huge impact on your productivity. So don't let your lack of sleep and your nighttime routines ruin your next day productivity. Hey, just a quick reminder that the Insta Accelerator Academy is now open. If you're sick of jumping from coach to coach and course to course to not only build your business, but explode on Instagram, then this membership academy is the answer. Not only do you have access to a ton of Instagram and business building bundles, which you can do at your own pace, you'll also have access to monthly coaching calls with me and a private community of other entrepreneurs who have your back. If you're ready to take back control of your time spent on Instagram and grow your brand and business with ease and confidence, and finally show up on social the way you were always designed to do by the grace of God, then head to bossladyandsweatpants.com and join the Academy. No need to dump thousands of dollars into masterminds and high ticket coaches. Get the clarity and confidence you need that costs less than your monthly manicure. I'll see you inside the Insta Accelerator Academy. All right, number three, this could be a really bad habit that you don't even know you're doing. Are you a yes person? Do you say yes to everything. Now I used to be this person and sometimes it's still very hard for me to say no to a few things because I know that I preach, build your relationships, build your community. But sometimes that doesn't mean it's necessary or it's going to help you. There is a place for doing collaborations or taking quick questions from your audience, but you'll need to figure out where to draw that line. So here's a really great example. This recently happened to me. I would say well over seven months ago, I was approached by another podcaster who I was not familiar with. He seemed credible to me. And I even checked out his company and his podcast, and he seemed very successful, had a great business. And he was putting together an article of why small businesses should start a podcast, the benefits of a podcast. So we set up a time. He wanted to interview me. And then my answers to the questions 
would be in an article that would be published to help me get exposure and visibility. Honestly, I should have really listened to my gut because first of all, I was very unfamiliar with this podcast and I don't know, just something was telling me that something wasn't right, but I wanted to be that yes person. I wanted the visibility and I wanted the exposure. So I spent a lot of time preparing for that interview. It took a lot of time away from my business, away from my family to prepare. I did the interview. I did the follow-up. Here we are seven, eight months later. Finally, that article was published and my whole section was a whopping two sentences and there was no value to it. It gave no value to the audience. I didn't realize how many other podcasters would be inside this article. It was unbelievable. I had to scroll through this article to get to my section, which was a whopping two sentences, like I said, and gave zero value. It was a complete waste of my valuable time. And in the long run, was this going to give me any visibility, any exposure? I don't think so. So I think the lesson here is to really trust your gut. Does it feel right to you? If it feels right to you and you're like, oh, this would be amazing, then okay, say yes. But you don't always have to be the giver. And I think this is like a mom thing or a woman thing that we just feel that we have to give. We feel we have to say yes. We feel that we have to please everybody. So here's my advice. Don't be a yes person, be a strategic collaborator. I mean, yes, you want to help other people, but you have to, this is your business. This is your time. Is it going to pay off in the end? Will it help you or will it help your audience? So instead of being the yes person, think of yourself as a strategic collaborator. So you can respond to someone and say, thank you for the opportunity, but right now, I don't don't think this is a strategic move for me, or I don't think that this would give my audience a lot of value at this time. So think of yourself as a strategic collaborator, not just a yes person. And I think that's going to help you in the long run to building better habits when it comes to opportunities. All right, number four, you probably have a to-do list, but Look at your to-do list. Is it business producing work or is it just staying busy? And I'll tell you, this is something that I seem to struggle with still in my business. This has been a really huge shift for me to realize that the tasks that I have written down, are they really business producing tasks or is it just this need to feel busy? Because a lot of times if we feel busy, it makes us feel successful. It makes us feel that we accomplished something. So I think my biggest advice here is you need to determine what are the two to three most important tasks for the day. And I like to look at my whole week and I will make the most important task and put them at the beginning of the week because there's going to be a lot of tasks that you're just not going to get done and it's just going to have to be pushed to the following week. But at least I know that the task I'm doing is highly focused business producing task. And I like to put them at the beginning of the week and make sure that I'm time blocking with no interruptions. So take a look at that. And that's really hard to practice. And this happened to me just last week where I was finished with homeschooling And then I had two really important tasks that I needed to get done. And I actually finished them in less time than I thought it would take. And I remember looking at the clock and it was like one o'clock in the afternoon and I was done. But I had this sense of guilt because I felt that I needed to be busy. So we need to have that mindset shift. It's not about being busy. It's about being productive. And if you can be productive in less time and then go and enjoy your day, amen, you're doing it right. And remember, this is why we all decided to be 
entrepreneurs. We did not want to live that corporate nine to five life. If that's what you want to do, great. And if it's helping you grow and it's help, helping you scale, awesome. But I'm the type of person where I don't want to be stuck behind my laptop all day long till four to five o'clock at night and then do dinner and then family. Like, no, that is not why I decided to be an entrepreneur. All of us want to be an entrepreneur or most of us at least want to be an entrepreneur. So we are spending less hours, but making a bigger impact. So you kind of have to have that shift. Are they just busy tasks or are they business producing tasks? You have to be able to look at that and then put those business producing tasks at the beginning of the week. All right, number five, this is something that I also struggle with. A bad habit is having zero boundaries. You have to draw a line, not only for yourself, but you also have to draw a line with your clients. They need to understand that you might not be responding to them in the evening. My audience has learned that uh, I don't have any, I would say, conversations or any interactions in the morning because I'm homeschooling and that's a boundary for me. I am not going to try and balance homeschooling, looking at my phone, jumping on a Zoom. Sorry, I'm not doing that. So you need to establish boundaries in your business. Remember, where do you see yourself in five years? Do you still want to be answering those crazy DMs or those crazy Voxer voice messages at 7.30 at night when you're trying to be at the movies with your kids or on a date night with your husband? No. So think about where you want to be in five years. Start acting like that person now. You need to be that person now. So have those boundaries. And then my last habit, and this is something that I need to work on myself, is not establishing office hours. I am so guilty of this. Now I know how many hours I will work in a day and depending on homeschooling and how the day is going and activities with my kids. But I think I need to get better at establishing office hours because I don't want to be tied to working my business, let's say at four in the afternoon where I'd rather be off hanging out with my kids and prepping for dinner. So think about it. If you don't have established office hours now, do you think you're going to have those office hours in five years? Do you want to just be working at any time of the day or the weekends in five years? No. So establish those office hours now. When are you working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Maybe you work a little bit on a Saturday morning, totally up to you, but establish those office hours because it's going to make you highly focused and productive. If you establish only two hours in the afternoon on a Monday between one and three in the afternoon, maybe you got a little one napping, or for myself, I finished homeschooling and now he's gonna do his thing for two hours. I'm highly productive, highly focused for those two hours, but establish those hours of when you're going to work. Turn off your phone, put the do not disturb. You need zero interruptions. All right, so I hope that was helpful. I want you to analyze the, this list. Are any of these bad habits sabotaging your productivity? Now, I also want to just let you know that you are going to see a shift in the podcast show. For two and a half years, I have been releasing one, if not two episodes a week, and I have not missed a week. Now, I love this show and I have no intentions on ever ending my podcast, but I want to let you know that you are going to see a little bit of a break. I will be releasing episodes now every other week. And I decided to make this bit of a change 
because I realized in my business and in my life and with the addition of homeschool, I was feeling very stretched. So I feel that this is going to be a really good balance between serving you, serving my audience with high value episodes without feeling stretched at home in my life and in my business. So I hope that you will still continue to listen to my show and just embrace this change. And if you are feeling that you need a change in your business, feel free to do it. Don't let other experts tell you that you must never scale back in your, in your business because you won't grow. You have to analyze what is right for you. So for a while, I have been feeling really stretched in not only my coaching and my academy and the podcast. So for right now, this is not forever. This is a temporary move. I will only be releasing episodes every other week, and they will still be a combination of solo shows and interviews, but I hope that they are highly valuable, but this is just so I can serve you better and protect my peace and protect my well-being. So I hope this was a great episode for you today, and I will see you next time. I can't thank you enough for listening today and supporting this show. The best way to support me and grow the podcast is by leaving a written review on Apple iTunes. I promise you, I read every review and take them to heart. And don't forget, head to bossladyinsweatpants.com to grab all my freebies or hang out with me on Instagram at Allison Scholes. I'll see you soon.